Uh, Teresa, you very recently hosted an incredibly successful golf tournament, the Bernie we Hutzler, sure which did. is always huge. Absolutely. It was our 36th annual. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had it held at the woods, actually, not this past Monday, but the Monday before. It seems like eons ago. But um, we were successful in netting $78,000. Awesome. That we're going to use, which our goal was 75, so we were very happy. And last year we netted 76, so we're, um, you know, improving, um, raising more money, which is a great thing. You beat it by um, $3,000, John. That's a 4% increase <laughs> over what they are hoping for. Go ahead, That's very some. good. <laughs> Go ahead, <Teresa. laughs> So, well, we knew all along that the money was going to go to support um, our emergency departments at Jefferson and Berkeley Medical Center. So um, I'm happy to, to say that we're going to be able to buy the uh, equipment. Um, Jefferson's emergency department needed an infant warmer mm-hmm. um, because... Um, they for their ARC accreditation, which means that they are accredited to treat children, um, pediatric patients in the emergency department. And then they needed a LUCA machine, which is the the machine that does um, the um, resuscitation oh. if someone's uh, heart has stopped. So it's used um, for for those patients. And Berkeley needed one of those as well. So we're going to buy two of the uh, LUCA machines, and then um, the Berkeley uh, Emergency Department also needed a new ultrasound machine, and they're very expensive, but we're going to be able to pay for about half of that, um, which they were only asking for um, enough to get it down to $50,000, so mm-hmm. we're going to be able actually to get it down to about 30000 that um, That's we'll great. Have to- yeah. Pay who, for so. who won the tournament this year, Teresa? Um, Dr. Garcia and his um, fellow teams, they Thank golf you. all the time. <laughs> well, they're, well, they're doctors. Um, yeah. Um, but it, um, I'm trying to think of all the, the folks who are on his yeah. team. Um, Chris Ross, he always plays yeah. with him. Um, and the other two are just, they're escaping my mind right yeah. now. But A few years ago, the winners of the tournament did, uh, made the determination where the money went. You've changed that now. We so. have. Um, about three years ago, the committee thought that it was helpful in recruiting sponsors and getting support if folks knew in advance where the money was yeah. going to go. Um, and to be honest with you, usually, I mean, I would um, contact the different departments, get the list of equipment, and then we would kind of narrow it down to a couple of choices. But at sure. the day of the golf tournament, the winners were all, always, where do you think the money yeah, should sure. go? Where is it needed the most? So really. Mm-hmm. Um, Might as well do it, right? Yeah. yeah. It, this is the Bernie Hutch, Hertzler, uh, golf, her, I'm sorry, uh, golf tournament. Uh, the old timers know what Bernie did for the community. A lot of the new folks did not. Would you quickly spell out? Oh, what? Bernie Hutzler was a legend, yeah. and I always say anytime I talk about this tournament, because you know back in the day he would go on the radio shows and talk about it, and he referred to it as the granddaddy of all golf tournaments, because really it was established in 1988, and it was one of the first. Um, well, actually, it was the first um, golf fundraiser um, that was done um, by a, a foundation, foundation as a fundraiser. Um, so um, that's why we're so successful, because we've been doing it so many years. But um, Bernie was always there. He was on the inaugural committee. Of course, um, those who, you who knew Bernie, he was a former mayor of Martinsburg. Uh, he was a retired dentist when I met him. Um, but um, yes, he was on the hospital board. In fact, he was on the hospital board when um, the decision was made to associate with WVU in Morgantown. So he was one of the charter uh, board members of um, our WVU Hospitals East uh, board when we um, joined with Jefferson and uh, became a part of WVU Madison. So the uh, term is well named. It is. Yeah. And he was always there. I mean, I. Really, I mean, until the last year that he was involved with the tournament, he would come out on the Sunday before and help set up the tent. And, um, I mean, he was just very involved. He would come to my office. And back then, also, we put the teams together instead of letting people put their own team together because it was a friend raiser as well as a fundraiser. Mm. So you didn't really know who you were playing with. Um, you could not pick your own team. So, so you could show up and Doyle could be a part of your foursome. That's right. <laughs> no, he couldn't. Uh, <laughs> Doyle doesn't. This Doyle doesn't play golf. My brother does, and he's really good at it. He plays all the time. Yeah, but you ski, right? 
Huh? I ski. I'm the skier in the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Teresa, I do remember that big decision about affiliating with WVU uh, mm-hmm. hospitals. And uh, at the time, there were a number of people in Jefferson and Berkeley counties that wanted to affiliate with Winchester because Winchester wanted it. And I, I think the, they made the correct decision to affiliate with WVU. Uh, but uh, it was, for a time, it was, uh, a, bit it was a bit of a tug of war. Wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was. And, you know, and I can say because I worked at City Hospital prior to any talk of mm-hmm. merging with or becoming affiliated with anyone. And then I had the pleasure also to go to Jefferson and work there for nine years mm-hmm. um, to help establish a marketing and PR department department there um, and then went back to city to to be in charge of marketing and the foundation and mm-hmm. then in, that was in 2000 and then 2005 was when we merged with WVU hospitals in Morgantown so I've lived it I've been through the merger I knew what it was like working at both hospitals when they were each independent community mm-hmm. hospitals and I can honestly say to you all and everyone who's listening it's the best thing that has happened to health care here in the Eastern Panhandle yes in the beginning there were some questions you know is all the money going to go to Morgantown are you going to lose control you know of how to operate the hospitals and and so forth um, but it, it, look where we are now I mean, we have a cancer institute here in the Eastern Panhandle. We just opened our new heart and vascular institute um, in the in their new suite in the McCormick Center. We have the Rockefeller Neurosciences Institute. Um, we have so many specialty services that we provide now here in the Eastern Panhandle. Um, so folks don't have to go out of state. Um, you know, sometimes they may have to go to Morgantown for certain procedures, but um, we've come we've come a very long way. And it's every time that um, our president and CEO comes over. In fact, he was here two weeks ago or last week. Excuse me. It seems again like it was so long doing some State of the Union addresses, which is why I had to change my date um, to be on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but just when he starts talking about everything, and we're up to 24 hospitals now mm-hmm. that are a part of WVU Medicine, and one is in Pen- one of those hospitals is in Pennsylvania, one is in Maryland, and the other's in Ohio. So we've even branched outside of West Virginia. So there's just so much going on, and it's just benefited everyone. Is WVU getting into the Charleston market more on the southern end of the state? Uh, yes, we just purchased, our, uh, yes, now St. Thomas and St. Francis Hospitals in Charleston are a part of WVU Medicine. Yes. Teresa McCabe is our guest, and uh, uh, WVU Medicine uh, also one of the sponsors of this uh, segment of the program here today, too. So, uh Teresa, does does the hospital have a presence in the most southern end of the state yet? Uh, we have hospitals in Princeton. Princeton? Mm-hmm. Okay. About as far south as you can get. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, that's right there on the Virginia border. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we have Wheeling. I mean, really, Parkersburg. So if you look at it, yes, we have uh, representation. Uh, just out of curiosity, which are the ones in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland? Where are they? Oh, oh uh, um, Garrett okay. in, um, in Oakland, Maryland. Right. Uh, Uniontown, and then Barnesville. Okay, in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Th- those make sense because their proximity to the West Virginia, mm-hmm. where yeah. they are across the border, basically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Princeton, for example, what what service do you offer the Princeton Hospital? Um, you know, I can't speak specifically <laughs> to but, all because uh, the, the each is, has their own. Mar- but yeah. but yes, um, we took over Princeton Hospital. I want to say two years ago or so. Um, so I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you, Bill, exactly what, I mean, I know that, yeah. that it's a, a, a community hospital there. I guess my question was, uh, are the more serious cases still being deferred to Morgantown and uh, larger hospitals? Uh, Ruby yeah. is definitely still yeah. our tertiary care hospital within the system. Mm-hmm. So yes, any of the um you know more specialized services yeah. that are needed um emergent types of things that's where you know we primarily all of the hospitals um would would transfer patients now hospitals are graded on various uh, uh scales by a lot of nonprofit organizations how does ruby grade out compared to other state hospitals uh Honestly, Ruby has made so many advancements, actually, since Albert Wright has been our president and CEO. Um, 
which it's hard to believe, but you know, he he mentioned when he was here the other day, I think he started in 2014 because then in 2015 we had our rebranding as WVU Medicine. Um, Ruby, they have done a great job recruiting some of the most renowned physicians in the world <laughs> to, to lead the institutes, um, which are their specialty um, ser special specialty line services. So Dr. Vinay Badwar, for example, who heads up heart and vascular, um, he visited with us um, last month when we opened the new Heart and Vascular Institute. Has, a, um, has the equipment, specialized equipment, uh, kept up with yes, the Yes, uh, absolutely, the absolutely. Yeah. And not only that, but with recruiting some of these physicians, like Dr. Rezai and our, in, at the Rockefeller Neurosciences Institute and Dr. Badoir, I mean, the equipment that they need to offer the services that they're now offering in, in Morgantown. Yeah, in the Eastern Panhandle, the equipment has also been significantly upgraded. Yes, Do you absolutely. find there's a, a appreciably number of people that can now be treated in the county as opposed to having to go to Ruby? Absolutely, absolutely. We also have the telehealth services as well. So when there is a, a situation where someone may have to go to Morgantown, say, for a certain procedure that we don't do here locally, then they can do their follow-up appointments via telemedicine um, with some of the specialists as well. I don't want to go down the litany of all the uh, uh, instances you have to go to Ruby, but can you give two or three examples of, of where we cannot treat locally and we have to go to Ruby? Um, probably some of the more common ones would be with pediatric patients, okay. some of the subspecialties with mm -hmm. children. Now we do have a subspecialty clinic here um, that again um, our providers here uh, who work in that clinic are able to um, to use telemedicine to work with the subspecialists in Morgantown, so that helps. Um, but a lot of the pedi pediatric orthopedic types of things. Um, I was speaking with um, a young mother last evening at the Jefferson Chamber Mixer. Her two-year-old had to have um, some sort of specific um, surgery related to um, his ears um, that 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 he was referred to Morgantown, so the procedure's gonna be done there, but she does the follow-up um, in our subspecialty clinic. For diagnostics, uh, how much do you use intelli artificial intelligence? Okay, I, I'm thinking. <laughs> no, like, no, explain no, that no, one, no, Admiral. No, okay, no, I let me blank stare. Intelli An yeah, artificial yeah, intelligence. Okay, yeah. Explain that. Let one. me let me go back okay. and uh, uh, frame it. Uh, a, few, <laughs> a few years ago, uh, I think in uh, one facet of cancer research, uh, Duke University was uh, very active, very aggressive in trying to assemble all the input worldwide global into something that could be easily digested by by a, a physician mm -hmm. uh, and they made this available to to the uh, all hospitals this was artificial intelligence in the pure sense my sense is is this still are you are you making a greater use of the capability of artificial intelligence than what you did say 10 years or so ago i expect the in, easy answer is yes but i I would think, yeah, okay. yes, but still a lot in medicine, um, you know, is is done as well um, with some of the diagnostic testing yeah. and cancer with a lot of the, um, the, the, the trials that, that we're doing with the different medications and so forth. Teresa, so. want to talk about, go ahead, John. Um, a number of years ago, Teresa, I remember going to a big dedication ceremony in a field east of Charlestown. And there was uh, plans for a whole brand new hospital out there uh, on, on, uh, uh, on, on really nine Route 9, 40. south southeast uh -huh. toward the uh, We're toward calling Shander. that now Blue Ridge Crossings. That's the name of our new campus there. It's a 64 acre campus. Okay, so what is there? Nothing right now, but, okay. <laughs> but when you called it a campus. I, I thought yeah, yeah. that's because we are going to develop it as a campus. I was going to ask because so, it's been a mm -hmm. number of years and mm -hmm. people are wondering, it has been. is anything going to happen there? It is. In fact, um, at our last board meeting, our board approved um, over 30,000 or $30 million. We're, the, the first building on that campus is going to be a new medical office building. Okay. So we're going to start, because um, of course, right now there's no way really to get 
onto that land. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we will, you will be seeing some movement there and some roads going in. Um, and we plan to build a new medical office building. There are actually seven different um, plots, if you will, on that 64 acres. So we would be able to, to build up to seven, seven different types of facilities on there. Okay. Um, I know your next question is going to be, what about a replacement hospital for Jefferson? That's not being planned right now, but okay. eventually that could happen. And certainly it would be on that new campus where okay. that would happen. But um, the new medical office building is going to actually be on the side of that property that is on Route 340 before you oh, okay. get on. So it will be very visible from Route 340. Um, as you're then getting on to Route 9. Cause, yeah, because I remember when everybody went to the ceremony, we got off of Route 9. Mm -hmm. you know, and, the the and new Route 9 had was, just been built. I, yeah. And actually, it wasn't even built then. We got special permission to drive on that road to then walk up that hill. Yeah. yeah and the purpose of that was the Langlet family. Um, of course, that, that was Dr. Part Jules of the Langlet, mm -hmm. yes. And he was a, a family med. Actually, he not only was family medicine, he also did surgery back in mm -hmm. the day when family practitioners did more mm -hmm. did pretty much everything ob and um and and he uh, specifically surgery but they actually donated 10 acres of that land okay. when we purchased the rest of it um with the exception of the, the most recent was a 14 acre parcel and that's what got us the visibility on to route 340 okay <clears throat> but anyway so that was more to thank the langlets and at that time um the administration had plans to to build a replacement hospital there. I know, but but things <laughs> changed, <Okay>. um, <laughs> and um, some other suggestions were made, and some money was put into Jefferson to do the, the existing Jefferson to do okay. some refurbishing. But uh, that is, if you look at our ten year and beyond plan, there's still that place card there to eventually build a new hospital. Okay. Moving back property. to Berkeley, 10 years plan. Mm -hmm. uh, the parking garage, has that mm -hmm. still been considered and also single, uh, shipped into all single rooms? Yes. Okay. Um, and actually, um, we have a, a group of folks going to Morgantown within the next month or so to present a proposal to build a new, two, a new patient tower on the front of Berkeley Medical Center that would also include uh, a multi-level parking garage underneath that new tower and that would allow us then to get to all private patient rooms yes okay. it would be four stories three of the four stories would be patient rooms in patient rooms and then one story would be medical office for our clinics yeah. the one area that you received a lot of head over the head in barbs the wellness center mm -hmm. closing the wellness center where are we in having the replacement for the wellness center? 20 seconds for that answer Trish. we will not be building a new wellness okay. center we partner with one life fitness they're building a new mm -hmm. um wellness center and actually we opened where the wellness center used to be that's where the new hvi okay. um yeah. suite yeah. is and it's marvelous now having all of our cardiologists our thoracic surgeons our vascular surgeons are all now in the same area and can do procedures even things that people had to go to the hospital before yeah. it can all be done in that suite so right. 